dudes. Oh, oh. Okay, I went and uh, got out of there. Then I went and got some gas a couple of miles down the road. Met a dude named John on a big, capable bike. He's doing the, uh, the BDR, same as me. We will see him uh, blast by us at some point. He was having a coffee. I think he said he started in Atlanta. And uh, all right, I'm on the, I'm officially on the route at 8:06 a.m. That's not so bad, especially after 30 or 45 minutes of crying like a little baby. I'm such a little bitch. But seriously, <laughs> if if the tire had been flat for real, I mean, come on. So here's uh, here's the situation. The beep went off at at 3:30 again same exact time maybe that's just when it gets coldest at night and i looked at it i've already said this i have but i looked at it it said 25 psi i'm like no problem it's just the it's just the temperature so i went back to sleep and it didn't go off again so it didn't get any lower i guess so i got up and uh first thing i um unpacked the compressor so I hooked up the compressor, turned it on, and, and it went to zero. And it wasn't taking any air. And the stem, I imagined that it was cockeyed. And so I'm like, I fucking tore the stem again. It's not taking air because it's just blasting right out the stem. And I'm a stupid idiot. Blah -de blah. So I made some coffee and sulked like a little baby <laughs> and uh, texted Steve and, uh, and Johnny Pow to share it. I want to spread the misery around <laughs> and, uh, and I'm just like ready to just toss it in man I'm ready to toss in the towel throw in the towel can you toss in the towel too I believe that you can I think any way you get the towel in is acceptable so, just feeling miserable, started to write a post to the uh, Mid-Atlantic BDR Facebook page to say, man, can someone help me because I, or, you know, try to get some shops to recommend or something. Because um, I, I just wasn't going to change the tire again myself because if I fucked it up once again, you know, back to the definition of insanity can't keep doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results if every time I change a tire the, the stem tears well then I suck and that's it so I was just hit the bottom <laughs> I was ready to find a rental car company and just toss a little ugly in the woods and go home that's where my head was at So I figured, let me give it one more time. I'll air it up. And I, I put the thing on. It was getting no, no pressure on the gauge at all. So I, I'm like, what is going on here? And then I, I took it off and just put my thumb against the end. And I was getting no air that way. I don't know if it would give air anyway. Unless you, anyway. The point is, I noticed that the little connector to the quick release tip that I have because I'm lazy and I, I can't be bothered to screw on the, <laughs> the pump to the valve. Oh Jesus. It was totally loose and so all the air was coming out of the tire and going out of there and coming out of the pump and going out of there. So I'm like such an idiot and I've never been happier to be an idiot. I tightened that up, said a little prayer. And uh, and aired it up. No problem. Now, did it lose air last night? I, I guess. I maybe. Oh wow! Holy shit! Hold on a minute.
Wow, dude, you're psyched. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I had to get off the bike and enjoy that for a second. Uh, I don't even, I don't know what I was talking about. Well, I know what I was talking about, but I don't know where I was. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I was talking about how it must have lost some air last night. I don't know. I'm hoping it's just fine. That's what I'm hoping. I felt like that wave was a little dismissive. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was no feeling in it. <laughs> it was kind of a fuck you, that wave. It's all right. He's probably having a bad morning. He probably had a flat tire this morning on his kayak. Okay, so I've gone from <laughs> the worst mood ever to being psyched again. Uh, oh my God, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Where your mind goes, man, you just like turn into just a little baby. I'm not saying you do, I'm saying I do. God. Get some spine, man. Embrace diverse, diversity? <laughs> I mean, embrace diversity, but <laughs> what am I thinking of? What's the, what's the word where things are not going well? <laughs> I know you're all saying it right now. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, what's the word? Oh my god. Uh, slowly, slowly, pieces of my brain are rotting away. I, I seriously, I can't think of the word. I kind of want to keep rolling until I think of it so you can see how long it takes, but I don't know if I have that kind of card space. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, well, it's going to be a thrill when I think of the word. <laughs> I think I'm drunk maybe. Oh my God. Diver no, no, no. Alright, this future and you're gonna have to cut this part out. I'm sorry man, this is too much, even for me. Embrace difficulties? Embrace hardship? No. There's a better there's a more there's a there's a word. What is it? I'm now I'm getting back into this morning's mood because I think I may have early onset Alzheimer's or something. I almost couldn't remember that. <laughs> oh, I don't think this would be a good place to just forget everything and not know who I am. Anyway, it's beautiful. The road is uh, is fast moving without much baloney on it and uh, it's cold it feels pretty good though I will say that um, it, it's it's irresponsible for stores that sell beer to not sell singles because if you force a man to buy a six pack of beer I mean it becomes a responsibility of that man not to waste any of that beer. You know? I mean, if you think about all the people going through difficulties and hardships, <laughs> you can't 
you can't let a perfectly good Budweiser beer that's still kind of cold go to waste. What that means is that man may drink all six Budweiser beers That might be what happens. I guess I guess it's not right for the man to put the responsibility on the beer seller. But to have the option of getting a single or two would have been nice. tell you where I got my human heads but if you can round yourself up you need about five skulls to make a good tire you also need to you need to melt them down into bone liquid and then you put that bone liquid in a in a form a tire form And then you got yourself some skull tires. I don't, I don't mess around with flat tires. I'm too busy tossing hand grenades and shooting my shotgun. So I just, just want to drop in and give you the handy little tip. Skull tires. Also, I'm just wondering if you thought of that word yet. I'm a little worried about you. All right, I stole this from Charlie Cinewan. I'm leaving a present for somebody right behind this rock. Covering it up. Okay. There's the rock. And it's at this little... There's the coordinates. Hopefully Ange can see that. I'm gonna take a screenshot too. Okay. Okay, so that's something I totally ripped off from Charlie Cinewan, along with my Char Charlie Cinewan mount that you can see back there. Cause uh, I have a huge crush on him. He's pretty awesome. And um, if you haven't seen his videos, go check out his channel. It's amazing. Start at the beginning. But anyway, I saw him do that where he like, he's got like a real book. I think it's like a, you know, coffee table album, sort of photo album book. But he, uh, just out in the middle of nowhere, he'd put him somewhere and let people know the coordinates 
and somebody would go get it. Now, <laughs> now he's got, you know, millions of subscribers. Actually, I don't know how many subscribers he has, but he has a ton. And so like the next day, someone would go get it. With me, this may be more like littering <laughs> because I highly doubt anyone is gonna ever go get that. I wonder if I'll get in trouble. Because my name's on it. Oh shit. <laughs> well. Anyway, this is probably an ill-conceived notion. But I think it would be funny if someone would go get it. So I'll uh in the description I'm gonna put if you do go get it, <laughs> which seems unlikely. Let me know so I can let people know it's been gotten because, uh, you know, I don't, don't want to waste anybody's time. Basically what this is, is I'm asking you to clean up my litter. You know what I mean? But I hid a, a book that I did in my 20s and a sticker. And I take no responsibility for what's in the book because I was in my 20s. And I was writing what 20 year olds write about. But, um, <laughs> the, it is really like littering. I'm just trying to get stuff out of my attic because I've got like, I don't know, 500 of those books left. I don't know why I haven't just thrown them all away, but I have an attachment to them. It took a lot to get that done. It was actually, a, I finagled the record company as part of our record deal <laughs> to to do that book because I was like it's gonna be great man everybody that buys the record will buy the book unfortunately nobody nobody bought the record or the book <laughs> but I was psyched to get the book out of it somehow like I, they had to pay for everything and and whatever Because at that time, I was really, I really wanted to be a writer. Well, I really wanted to be a famous rock star. I was a, I was a mediocre rock star. But we weren't, we were definitely not. I think my tax return from the last year of the band says $8,000. So, uh, you know, how long can you do that? You can do it all of your 20s. I can tell you that. And you should. Everyone should just live like an idiot throughout their 20s because you'll never be in your 20s again and it's okay to be an idiot. Don't waste it being responsible. You can start being responsible in your 30s. And honestly, that's my attitude with my kids too, but they're much more serious than I was. My oldest daughter is just hardcore. All she does is study for the LSAT. And she she just, she knows where she wants to be. And she's getting there. It's very impressive. And the other daughter wants to be a vet. I, we just, I'm, I'm sure I've said this before, but I have no idea where these kids came from my wife and I both were just idiots <laughs> so anyway it's uh it's lovely out it warmed up just a little bit and it's been these just lush forest beautiful Pennsylvania yeah really nice Pennsylvania is surprising I don't know why I don't know if you're not familiar with Pennsylvania you wouldn't really expect this I don't think I know I didn't but it's pretty amazing
Yeah, it's really cool, man. Right. So I just heard a weird, very weird sound. And I stopped. And somebody who uh, adjusted the chain didn't tighten the axle nut. The stupidest thing. Uh, and our buddy, uh, Brendan, who just did uh, like Denver to the end of the tat on a CT125 did the same thing and he lost his nut on the road. So I just drove an hour with this very loose and that could have been bad. Oh God. I mean, I'm paranoid about stuff like this. Why, how can I, oh, oh. embrace devastation? That's not it either. What is it? Okay, latest in the idiot's journey. I was just plugging this in, pulled that right off, right out, right disconnected. So now I'm fixing that. Yeah, come on, man. Wow. If I haven't convinced you that I'm a complete moron by now, I don't know, I don't know what else I can do. I'm sure I'll think of something. God, the number of stupid things I can do in a row is just quite mind-boggling. Oh, thank God that nut didn't come out. Because Brendan, he, he lost his like in the dirt somewhere, gone. And he, I forget what he, exactly what he did, but I think he like zip tied it together somehow and just limped to somewhere to buy a new nut. Oh man. Not good. I mean, that's a cardinal rule. For someone who's so OCD, I really just am losing it. All right, enough of that. Enough of that. Terrorist, terrorist gravel. So after, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Michaud, Michaud State Park, uh, it's been some like farmland, business districts, a couple of 55 mile an hour, not great roads, and some little towns like that. It's nice. I need to figure out what section I'm on. I think I was on five. And it might have just switched.
right, that was probably, I don't know, half hour of uh, pavement. 40 minutes, 45 minutes, I don't know. Now I'm on Three Square Hollow Road. Back in the dirt. And I'm passing many more riders on uh, this trip than I did on the tap. I think that's like the fifth or sixth guy I've seen. And I know you're interested in this, but uh, did I mention that HVAC problem at the business? Well, anyway, there's this course happening this weekend. It starts today and the HVAC went yesterday. So, um, I told Amy to do whatever she needed to do and gave her the name of our HVAC people. And she somehow got them to come out at 8.30 on a Saturday. And it was something easy, it's a clogged pipe or something. Okay, did you hear that? That's the axle noise. Again, but I, it's tight. What the hell, dudes? Okay, here we go again. Okay, I got a new one, new one for you. So, heard that noise again, scraping right here. I'm sure that's been good for the tire. There's all kinds of screwed up plastic back there. And I was like, what the hell's going on? Because the, uh, you know, the markers match, so the tire's like in the right spot. And this, Please tell me that's not loose. Please tell me that weld isn't loose. This was hooked under here, pulling the bike like that. How the hell does that happen? I didn't go over any huge bumps or anything like that. What the hell? I don't know if that weld is, I think it's broken. God damn it. God damn it. It, it is broken, I can feel it. up the wrap the rack with some uh, goalie straps and uh, mission control Johnny Powell gave me a couple of welding places up the way um, I called a couple of those and didn't have much luck and uh, then a guy went de went by a local guy and he said try this place it's six miles away um, I called him and he said maybe he could help, but he's gone at 12, and I know six miles away doesn't sound like much, but it's 11.10 now, let's see what time I get there. And to add to things, you know, I checked the tire again, I loosened the nut, I, uh, I checked that it was balanced on both sides, you know, with the chain tensioner things, and it is, but it's still rubbing against that plastic. So I think something worse might have happened. 
That's why I'm sitting so forward on the bike because if I lean back, it rubs. And to add to that, uh, one of the straps broke on my main uh, beaver tail setup. That's a major problem as well. I have no doubt that all that stuff is just going to fly off at some point. So, yeah. And look, this isn't Little Ugly's fault at all. If I didn't need luggage, we'd be golden. Jera. That guy was super cool. I think his name was Tom, Tom Jera. Saturday, hooked a brother up. Charged me next to nothing. I mean, so cool. But man, I'm beat. It's, all, it's 12.30 now. No, it's not. It's gotta be later than that. Time of day, huh? It's only 12:30. Okay, it's 12:30. I've gone 75 miles. That's not great. I don't know, dudes. The the back tire thing is still got me a little nervous. I don't know what's going on with that. But uh. That could become an issue <laughs> and this bike no one is ever gonna buy this bike from me never in a million years it's been so Frankenstein now oh, this, the webbing strap is really bumming me out I'm only on day four How many times have I had to pull out that toolkit? Too many. Adversity! Embrace adversity! That's it! Congratulations! That's it! Adversity, diversity, so close. And then I was stuck on the D. Oh, that only took, what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 11, 12, 4 hours? <laughs> ah. Embrace adversity. T-shirt design. Good lord. Whole chunks of my brain are just gone. That's what happens to you. Right. So now I think I'm back to. Yeah. Three Square Hollow Road. So this is where I was when I had the uh, major tire rubbing problem. And it's like I'm sitting forward on the bike and. I don't think I can do that for 
another 1,500 miles or whatever it is. Tomorrow's Sunday. Motorcycle shops are usually closed on Monday. So, I don't know. I will say, I, I don't know how much more I can take. I'm not in a bad mood, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating a simple fact that I'm not altogether sure how much more I can take. Because I, I do try to embrace adversity and I definitely try to embrace diversity, but at a certain point, my rule of, if it's not fun, don't do it, is gonna come into play. You know what I mean? There needs to be an even disbursement of adversity. Clumps are no good. Okay, so the problems of, of the moment are the back tire which is some, I think, suspension related, maybe. I don't know how to even check that. I mean, it's two little tiny shocks. They look like they're doing shock business, as far as I can tell. But I don't know what to look for. My tire pressure phone has stopped charging. And the webbing on the beaver tail broke. That's... Those are the problems of the hour. The beaver tail really sucks because I loved it. Being able to tighten that sucker down. I guess I like to tighten it a little too much. But come on, that's Moscow stuff. That should, that should take it. All right, I'm in the woods on a motorcycle. And there's a view. So it's all good. All right, I just saw a bridge out sign. I'm not seeing a great workaround. Really seeing much of any work around, honestly. Right. The bridge really is out. No way this way. Those are spread too far apart to walk the tires over. Unless I was able to like balance it on one. Which I'm just asking for trouble. I could build a ramp and try to jump it. I could break into that crane and crane the bike across. Um, okay, this looks... Almost doable, maybe. I might just try to walk it. This is a mistake. This is a mistake. You heard it here first. Get up over there. <laughs> oh. 
Oh shit. Holy shit. Oh my god. I cannot believe that worked. Oh. Oh Jesus. Okay, I got soaked, but the bike didn't go over, I didn't fall in, uh, so I guess, I guess all is well. Universe, why do you forsake me? I just want to chill right through the woods, man. That wasn't wise to do that. It was not wise. But I, I didn't even see a workaround. Or the workaround I saw was like too long. Soaked. I took a shower last night and uh, cleaned out, rinsed out my uh, the clothes I have been wearing for three days. And you would not believe what came out of those down the drain. It was disgusting. Disgusting. I bet if I drank it, I'd have superhuman powers but not worth it. So gross. But anyway, that stuff's drying on the back and my, uh, so I have my other pair of clothes on, nice and fresh, but now my socks are soaked. that uh, the welder guy, Tom I think was his name, um, Jaron, is that, is that what it was? Um, not only did he charge me like not even close to what he should have, but he also like gave me some, like a handful of really tough Ziplocs, like those kind that Brett had. How cool. He's got a Yamaha 1800 and he, he and his wife, she's got a Yamaha 950, I think, like a big street bike. And um, they go cruising at night. We were talking about being self-employed and how bunk it is. <laughs> Cause I was like, do you ever go on any trips? And he's like, nope, working. At least I find a way to like escape once a year. How nice is that to be able to do? 
very lucky. But another cool guy, man. Just so nice. Oh, I wanted to ask, was I, was I a little bitch back when the rack was breaking? Was I acting like a little bitch? I know I was. But listen, when bad shit happens, you bitch. That's what you do. You might not put it on YouTube. That's my problem. Are you guys thinking of my grandmother's books because we're in Amish country? I am. Yes. Wait, is this it? This isn't a gas station. Holy Jesus. I just wasted momentum. I love these little towns. I could live right there and sit on that porch. Listen to John Mellencamp. Seriously, where is this gas station? Now I, I've passed it. How have I passed it? It said groceries and gas. Where's the gas? Dudes, don't screw me like this. Gas and grocery. Where is it? this? Where's the gas? Oh, okay. Okay. Please have gas in you. in East Waterford, Pennsylvania. Made it to the gas station. Funky little store. And I just missed a turn. So I'm gonna stop in at the post office. And then I'm gonna put it in first. Mosey on back to the turn. How hard is it to follow the little arrow on a line? GG, no good gear. It's either wind it out or go five miles an hour.
dude is out there doing the field with a horse and a freaking drag behind plow. That's hardcore, man. I guess I could keep going, but I don't think I'm gonna. I've only done 170 miles so far, but I'm a little bit weary. Well, we're just gonna have to take a minute right here. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Drink some water. And look yonder. I guess you probably noticed there's no back camera footage today. Or at least maybe the second half of the day. Just stopped working. The camera works and the remote turns on, but they don't they're not jiving. I tried to repair it. Didn't work. Hopefully I can figure it out tonight. I also want to express my thanks to the weather gods. Seriously, thank you. Be appeased. Keep it up if you can. I do this quite a bit. Just stop and check out the awesomeness. I think I hear a bike in the distance. I do. Let's hope there's a camp spot for me. Hey, please like this video if you liked this video. And if you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. Also, if you're interested, there are links to gear lists and goofy t-shirts in the description. Thanks a ton for watching.